بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كما تعود سلفنا الصالح أن نذكر أول شيء للنيات لأن يعني النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إنما الأعمال بالنيات Habib started in the name of Allah and reminded us all that it's befitting for upon us to begin in the way that our pious predecessors began and this is based on the hadith of the Prophet who said that verily actions are based by their intentions. Uh, Habib is now wanting us to use the intention which Imam Al Haddad made. The intention of Imam Al Haddad, I hereby intend to learn and to teach, to be reminded and to remind, to be beneficial and to derive benefits, to be useful and to find use, and to encourage, encourage holding fast to the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to call unto guidance and to guide unto good for the sake of God, his pleasure, proximity and reward, transcendent is he and exalted is he. And in addition to this, everything else which our pious predecessors have intended. Al-Fatiha. Fatiha, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All praise is due to Allah, a praise that is good, a praise that is pure, a praise that is abundant. And may his prayers his blessings and mercy be upon the most honorable of creation. Sayyidina wa Habibana wa Nabiyana Muhammad bin Abdullah. Our master, our prophet, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan. And may this be extended to his family his companions, and all of those people who follow upon this path of excellence. And we previously mentioned that there is no nation such as this nation which was concerned and was particular about their prophets such as Ummah. Which is why we find that nothing small nor big, it's except that it's been recorded, carried from the companions about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they recorded for us how he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would rest. To the extent of that which he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to eat. To the extent then an example of this intense or strong following that when one of the companions took the pledge, the allegiance, the bay'ah as it's known in the Arabic language, the Prophet sallallahu top collar as Habib mentioned was slightly open. And thereafter, this companion who witnessed this, he, out of his strong following, intense love for the Prophet 
never ever moving forward in his life would close that area. So he was then asked as to why do you not close this area? And he responded beautifully saying that when I took the pledge or the bayah with the of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that particular area was open. Look very closely at this sense of concern and these little details to which the companions would follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is why we have different narrations. Some companions would explain as to how the Prophet وسلم, would enter or exit his home. Others would speak about how he would smile and others would speak about how he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would drink water wa hatta na'la an-nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam allafu kutubun kathir ma yuqarib an 17 kitab bas fi al-na'la al-sharif which is why we find in our rich tradition that even his blessed sandals have been documented or spoken about and Habib mentioned that the books that are available that or the books that have been authored are more than 17 books about just the blessed sandals of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَمِنْ كِبَارْ عُلَمَاء هَذِ الْأُمَّةِ مِثْلَ الْإِمَامِ ابْنُ عَسَاكِرْ عِنْدَهُ كِتَابٍ عَنْ نَعْلَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ And mentioning then one of the great ulama, Imam Asakir, وَأُلِّفَتْ قَصَائِدْ فِي النَّعْلَ الشَّرِيفِ As well as poetry that, that, ha, that was written about the blessed sandals of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. مثل, uh, مثل الإمام القاضي اليوسف النبهاني. An example of such individuals who wrote about, wrote poetry regarding the sandals of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the great Imam Yusuf Nabahani. Written many books and poetry in this topic about the sandals of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. من أبيات مد ذكره للنعل الشريف. So we will now some of the poetry lines about the blessed sandals. في إحدى قصائد قال في البداية على رأس هذا الكون محمد على رأس هذا الكون نعل محمد علت فجميع الخلق تحت ظلاله. لدى الطور موسى نودية اخلع ومحمد عالقرب لم يومر بخالع نعالي And one of these قصيدات then or poetry if you like by Imam Yusuf Nabahani mentions that upon the head of creation i.e. upon the whole of creation is the sandals of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the, the poem continues to say, it's elevated above all of creation and, light, and as a result, all of creation is then under the shadow of the blessed sandals of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Habib further mentions that as for Prophet Musa, he was ordered to take off his shoes. However, Ahmed, i.e. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
he elevated and was not ordered to take off his shoes, bringing reference to what we spoke about last time in the Isra and Mi'raj of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. هو ألف عدة كتب ويقول في آخر قصيدة إني خدمت مثال نعل المصطفى ليعيش ليعيش تحت في الدارين تحت ظلالهم سعد ابن مسعود بخدمة نعله وأنا السعيد بخدمة مثله. And then Habib further mentions this قصيدة of Imam Nabahani where he says that I then gave service to uh, an example of the, the sandal of the Mustafa, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in order that I may live in this life and the hereafter under its shade, i.e. the shade of the blessed sandal. And then he mentions Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion attained felicity by, ser by serving the blessed sandal. I will attain felicity by serving its example. Or I hope to attain felicity by serving its example. لأنه كان سيدنا عبد الله عبد الله بن مسعود هو الذي يخلع نعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وإذا أراد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يلبس النعل هو الذي يلبس النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And Habib is now making reference to the first lesson where we spoke about this great companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud who would be who would serve the blessed sandals of the Prophet be in service to the Prophet as far as his sandals were concerned and when he wore them he would present them to him and when the Prophet would take his sandals off he would then keep the Prophet sandals with him. من شدة حب سيدنا عبد الله بن مسعود للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وتعظيمه للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أخذ النعل ما يحطه تحت باطه لأنه النعل هذا شريف عنده ما يضعه تحت الباط بل يمسكه بيده أو في بعض الأخبار أنه يضعه فوق رأسه. And from then we see as a result of his magnification or his respect and love for the Prophet وسلم, and likewise anything attached to the Prophet وسلم, like his sandals Abdullah ibn Mas'ud then when he would take the sandals from the Prophet وسلم, he wouldn't put them carry them then in his armpits he would elevate them and in some narrations it even says that he would put them on his head كان سيدنا عبد الله مسعود كان قصير كان قصير القامة ونحيف جدا. عبد الله بن مسعود then was in terms of his description he was very he was thin and quite short. حتى أنه مرة من المرات طلع طلع نخلة فبانت الساق ساق سيدنا عبد الله بن مسعود فضحك الصحابة. And Habib then mentions a story. Which took place where Abdullah ibn Mas'ud once climbed up a tree and it happened that his shin was revealed. And this then caused the companions to laugh at, the, at him. And what caused them to laugh was the way the shins of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud looks such that they were very thin. And the Prophet وسلم, as was his beautiful custom and would always be concerned about everybody around him responded to this situation or this um, incident with saying that these shins, i.e. the shins which you are laughing at, the, the thin, thin shins, verily they are heavier in terms of deeds than mountain Uhud on judgment day. <laughs>
هو امتداد لسيرة الصحابة. So likewise, when in our attendance of this lesson regarding the blessed sandals of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it is as if we are imitating that which the companions did in serving the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. أنتم تريدون أن تعرفون أوصاف النعل. Such that we want to know more about the description of the blessed sandals of the Prophet And so it so happened that a companion, Habib mentioned by the name of Qatada, approached Anas. Radiallahu anhu and asked him to describe for him how the sandals of the Prophet وسلم, looked. وسلم, now Habib says that look at this, that even in the very details, the, the things that we would consider to be small, such as um, irrelevant, such as sandals. The companions would ask about this. Which is why then this is my point, Habib says, that we are following upon the footsteps of those companions who were particular even with the smaller things. So the response then to Anas's response to um, this companion Qatada, he said that describing the sandals says that they had two straps. Habib said that um, he has pre he, he will prepare or he has prepared a picture in which describes as to how the sandal looked. And those two are the two shoe straps that we were referring to now, which Anas responded to Qatada. So there where Habib is pointing with the pencil, that is where the Prophet would put his big toe. That is the left shoe. And then in the between the space between those two shoe straps is about three centimeters, Habib mentioned. And the Prophet وسلم, would enter um, two toes in there. So as as Habib is explaining there, that the two, the two straps that we saw, the Prophet وسلم, if because we saw the, 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 the left-hand shoe, the right, the, 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 the bigger toe on the left-hand side would go into one, and then the two would go into that space, which is three centimeters, and then the other two would be in the other side. So Habib just, men just um, mentioned um, something, a, a light note there that please forgive me for showing you um, my feet. As for the description, that is um, 
one of the descriptions that have been, um, or th this is a description that Habib said that um, mentioning a scholar Hafiz al Iraqi. هذا شكل آخر اختلاف بسيط هنا عن عن هذه. يمكن ترينا كلاهما. اختلاف بسيط. So we see a slight difference in the two um, in the two styles. Um, and it's just a, he just said that it's, it's really just a small difference of opinion in terms of the shape. So the one then on the right hand side of the screen, that was the description mentioned by Al Hafid al Iraqi, and the one on the left hand side of the screen is the one that was mentioned by the scholar by the name of Adelami. And Habib mentions here that it's really amazing that the scholars have put so much effort in describing its length and other things related to the blessed sandal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if this represents anything, then it's definitely their love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and anything attached to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And by the permission of Allah, we will continue to go into more details then about um, the description and that relates that which is related to the blessed sandal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they even mentioned how many pairs of sandals from the research of the scholars. And this is all something that we hope, inshallah, to mention in the future lessons. There was a sandal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Sayyidina Aisha, who then passed it on to Umm Kulthum, Habib mentioned. كيف كان السلف الصالح يتبرك بصورة النعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هذه هذه الصورة التي 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 أنتم تعمل بها. And something that we also going to touch on as is in the 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 screen of Habib there is how the scholars would derive blessings from. The blessed sandals of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Habib then mentions, gives examples as to how not only the scholars but people in general would derive blessings from the description of that of the blessed sandals of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he then opened up a story saying that there was once a lady who was having um, difficulties um, giving birth. So there was a delay then in her delivery and she was then recommended or they suggested to her that carry with you during this process a picture of the blessed sandal of the Prophet Sallallahu She did so and likewise blessings followed and she delivered. <laughs> Habib would now like to open up the platform to, inshallah, our blessed participants to ask uh, questions, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyidi, um, this is Suleiman Yassin. Um, the question I have is, 
ما شاء الله تبارك الله ما شاء الله تبارك الله ما شاء الله ما شاء الله how do we serve how can we serve the sandal of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i heard them say this meaning that yeah. said ibn masud how how can we serve the sandal of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam فالسائل يسأل وهذا الأخ سليمان ياسين من أمريكا يسأل أم ذكرتم الأبيات للإمام يوسف نبهاني حيث خدم النعال أم حيث أم عبد الله بن مسعود خدم النعال ففي في وقتنا الحالي كيف يمكننا نحن نخدم هذا النعل الشريف نحن نحن تعظيمنا لكل الآثار هو من باب الخدمة. For us magnifying the relics or the prophetic relics, um, those um, the sandals and so forth, this is a type of service in itself. مثل أما أسستكم المباركة التي خدمت هذا يعتبر خدمة للنع للنع للنعال. And an example that he gave is such as the blessed organization of Brother Ibrahim from Cape Town, the organization called Everything Baraka. This is just an example of serving the blessed sandal of the Prophet فيها النعل يلبسون هذه القوافي فيها النعل نحن فرحانون كثير وهذا من باب الخدمة. and what brings what brings happiness to the heart of Habib is that when even the little kids wear kufis um, headgear such as Habib has mentioned there which has the Blessed, the image of the blessed sandal of the Prophet وسلمة, such as those products that um, Brother Ibrahim in Cape Town um, produces with the shape of the Prophet وسلمة, sandals. نعم حبيب. من تعظيم هذه من تعظيم هذه أنا رأيت الحبيب عمر بن حفيظ إذا أراد أن يدخل دار الخلاء الحمام يخلع هذه من فوق راسه ويلبس يلبس كوفية بدون عليها النعل هذا تعظيم للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And a living example of this, and Habib Ubaidullah mentioned this, that he himself witnessed Habib Omar, who is obviously his, who, who he is the father-in-law of Habib Omar, and who Habib Omar stays by his residence sometimes when he visits him in Makkah. He said, I've seen him with my own eyes that out of his respect for this image is that whenever he would go to the restroom or go to the toilet he would remove the kufi which has the shape of the blessed sandal and replace it with another kufi not having this blessed image out of respect of this image of the blessed sandal of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam akada ya'mal yakhla hadi alladhi fiha an'al al-sharif ويلبس التي دون عشان عشان دار دار الخلاء لا يليق بهذه أن يدخل دار دار الخلاء. and Habib now gave a practical example as to how he witnessed Habib Omar with his own eyes that he would take off this sandal or this um, kufi which had the description of the Prophet Sallallahu sandals and put on a more simpler kufi before entering the toilet out of respect for the image. Jazakumullah May Allah reward you for your question, Brother Suleiman Yaseen. Nuwasil al asil There's a question here from um, Brother Ubaidullah, um, Johannes, I believe he's from South Africa. Were all his sandals two strapped or were some single? As for the majority of the narrations which have been mentioned, they mentioned that they had two straps and not single strapped. Uh, the sisters can feel free to ask their questions but, um, by writing in, inshallah.
A question is asking that the khuf, um, the leather um, socks, if you like, of the Prophet وسلم, fit into his sandals. Athail yasal, hal kana nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hinama idha, hinama yalbis al khuf, hal kana yudkhil bihima fi na'al? يعني يعني يخلع النعل ويلبس الخف هذا هذا الذي هذا الذي يعلمه نعم um, from what I know is that he would not wear the two together he would take the خف off and then wear the sandal that is from my knowledge بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم لك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا وصلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد نورك السار ومددك الجاري واجمعنا به بكل أطواري وعلى آله وصحبه ونور اللهم ارحم أم سيدنا محمد We praise Allah اللهم. praising Allah and sending Salutations upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Habib now begins with the concluding dua. O oh Allah, have mercy upon the nation of Muhammad. Allahumma arham umma Sayyidina Muhammad. O oh Allah, have mercy upon the nation of Prophet Muhammad. Wa farrij an umma Sayyidina Muhammad. And lift the calamities from the nation of Prophet Muhammad. Wajma shamli umma Sayyidina Muhammad. And bring order to their affair. And cause them to attain victory over all that go against them or their enemies. And O Allah, have mercy upon our deceased as well as their deceased. And especially our brother Osama Kanan who recently passed away. Allahumma ja'al qabruhu rawdah min riyad jannah. Allahumma arhamahu. O Allah have mercy upon him. Allahumma tajawaz an sayyatu. O oh Allah, overlook the shortcomings of our brother Osama Kanan. Wa badjil sayyatu ila hasanat. And should there be any shortcomings or sins, then replace these sins and make them good deeds, O oh Allah. Wa da'if lahu al hasanat. And multiply for him his rewards. Allahumma naqihi kama yunaqqa al-tawb al-abiyad bin al-danas wa skinhu a'la faradis al-jinan and make his abode the highest of places in paradise Allahumma ya arham al-rahimin ya arham al-rahimin O Allah, the most merciful of those that show mercy wa ij'al haad al-durus hujjatan lana la hujjatan alayna we beseech you, Allah, and ask you to make these lessons in our favor and not against us. And, O oh Allah, just as you have given the ability to Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud to serve, the blessed sandals of the Prophet وسلم, enable us likewise to do this. And make us as well as our children from those that are guided and those that guide. And those that are obedient and those that rectify other people and bless our children and especially the newborn of brother Muhammad Kashif 
and Sister Ibtitham from Cape Town. Allahumma barik lahum fi hadal mawlud. Oh Allah, bless them in this newborn. Wa ambithu nabatan hasanan. And make him from those who are righteous. وَجْعَلْهُ قُرَّةَ عَيْنِ لِسَيِّدِ الْكَوْنَيْنِ And make him the coolness of eyes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَجْعَلْهُ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءَ الْعَامِلِينَ And make him from the scholars who implement what they know. الْهَادِين الْمُحْتَدِين Those that are guided and guide others. وبارك لنا في أولادنا. And O oh Allah, bless us, bless our children. وأطل وأطيل أعمارنا بطاعتك. And extend our lives in worshiping you. وإذا أردت أن تختم أعمارنا أختمها بلا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله. And if it so happens that you have written for any of our lives to come to an end, then we ask you, our Allah, that this ending be upon La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi sirri asrar al-Fatiha. By the secrets of the Fatiha. Recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.